Welcome to the one within all. My name is Chance and this is Interverse, a podcast about the infinity of your imagination, the creativity at your core, and our individual quests for freedom and authenticity in life. Listeners will know that I've got a huge love for festival culture, but for all the positive pathways we produce by partying with like-minded music and art lovers, there's still a big void in the culture of the community around the prerequisite philosophies that are going to be needed to produce real changes at the societal level. As larger gatherings go more towards big corporate sponsors and festivals become more mainstream, I feel that we're burning the countercultural roots of our movement and replacing them with Budweiser ads. And while it's true that transformational festivals have emerged that are bridging the gap between partying and personal rites of passage, there's an inconsistency between most new agey feel-good gurus and the occulted philosophy of natural law. While I don't think any topic or mindset should be taboo, Only truth can grant lasting spiritual transmutation, and there's a frustrating amount of solipsistic sentiment in both festival culture and mainstream Western society. What I mean by solipsism is the notion of relativistic truth, or that we each get to make up truth for ourselves. And beyond that, there's also a great deal of very similar to Judeo-Christian type of mindsets where Instead of saying that God did this or God wills that, instead we're saying the universe is what is deciding things. I don't see how that's really any different. So while there are subjective truths out there, such as it's true that I like cats and someone else might not, there's also capital T truth, which is totally evident in things like history, the laws of physics, and that the color of the sky is usually blue. It's this unconscious rejection of natural law that allows for a so-called civilization to be run on the stolen bioenergy of other humans, animals, and the oily blood of the planet itself. And it's because so many people are stuck in our ways of dependency on this soul-sucking system that the only change we see is the totalitarian tiptoe of tyrannical government, slowly eroding our quality of life until there's not much left except the 9-to-5 job, your house payment, and bank account. I think it's essential to constantly remember that defeating these evil establishments has nothing to do with physically fighting them and everything to do with realizing your own infinite value as a being and learning to rely on that instead of the convenience crutches that we've collected in the last century. It's with all this in mind that I'm really excited to welcome my good friend Nathan Crabtree back to the show and introduce his Freedom Fest, which is going to be held at the New Haven Event Park in Ava, Missouri on May 3rd through May 5th next year. Joining us on this episode is also Aubrey Malika, who is working with Nathan to develop this awesome new event and is a new friend of mine. Nathan's returning to Interverse for his third appearance, and he's also the host of his own excellent podcast called Nathan's Freedom Zone, which you can check out on SoundCloud. Crushing the capstone cabal and eliminating the grip of their oily appendages in our lives is going to require taking responsibility for our own knowledge and imaginatively generating solutions through real communities of real individuals not groupthink or dogma. Empowering fellow freedom lovers is what this upcoming festival will be all about. Some of the topics that are on the table for this gathering include but are not limited to healing modalities to counteract the countless conspiracies against the common man, gardening and homesteading, meditation, yoga and other personal energy practices, philosophy and de-occulting hidden truths, and much more. You can find a link to the event in the show notes for this podcast. And one thing that makes it very different is that it costs nothing to get in, although donations are accepted and that vending and workshops are free for everyone and anyone to come and set up. Before we get started, I also want to remind you that there's an extended version of this conversation available by becoming an Interverse Plus member on patreon.com forward slash Interverse. Check the show notes for a link to subscribe to your favorite podcast. Help support me and the show, which is totally ad-free and funded solely by donations from you. Plus members also get early access to episodes and some entirely exclusive bonus content. And you can access a growing archive of extended episodes where we go deeper into the types of thinking that might just help you expand your consciousness and increase your creative freedom as an artist of life. I can hardly wait for Freedom Fest. It may be all the way in May 2019, but at least for now, I've got Nathan and Aubrey here to tide me over with a great conversation about philosophies near and dear to my heart. Thanks, Chance. Very great to be on again. Aubrey is actually my my new roommate, and we we get along real well. We met through the New Haven community and actually through the Springfield community, how we originally met, but we're, we're very connected as far as, you know, medicine and, you know, plant medicine and even philosophy. Aubrey is very open-minded 
very quick learner. Very impressed with him. Well, thank you, Nathan. I appreciate it. Really pleased to be here. Thank you for having me on. I'm really excited for this festival. It's all about freedom from the way it's ran to the topics discussed. It's going to be a blast. Well, so what led you guys to even care about a concept like freedom in your lives? Whenever I was in college, right, I started smoking cannabis. To me, it just seemed like an obvious brain upgrade on some level. It, you know, helped me out. I was, I was very stressed out, you know, with all that left brain uh, schoolwork. And cannabis just helped. And then, then I realized, once I started smoking cannabis, that there was a gang, a street gang, who had license to arrest me at any time. And they could throw me in a cage. And then one of the things they looked for was cannabis users. And then my school was in the same gang as them. And my school would kick you out of school just for having cannabis. And, like, they would call the police on you. It was it was just a giant mess. And it made me feel like I was in a prison. And that was one of the original experiences that I had that sort of set me down a path of trying to figure out, you know, what's going on basically on Earth to where a situation like that could even arise. Before that, I didn't really realize that uh, the government was real, literally out to get you in many cases. Right. That's really well put. I feel like in a lot of words, to little to me, it was just kind of that mind-expanding process of learning to meditate and feel deeply and think about the bigger truths of the universe, mathematical, physical, spiritual and otherwise. And I feel like that leads a lot of people down a road of eventually realizing that not only does it feel like a slave system, it quite literally is. The money is printed debt from the beginning. And there's a whole list of things having to do with the fact that we're under constant duress, different things like that. And it's just those uncomfortable feelings that make everyone slightly just depressed or anxious on some level, I feel like. It's not that we're like broken humans. It's that we live in a world that is so disharmonious with nature and our ethical beliefs, regardless of if our parents even have the same ethical beliefs. Somehow this generation is really coming up strong with ideas that are going to change the way that we live in a positive way. And that's what Freedom Fest is about. I'm right there with you guys. I discovered cannabis in college and not long after discovering it, that's when I also ran into meditation and to starting to actually think about my spiritual place in the universe. And, uh, you know, what's amazing is that for as powerful of a medicine as cannabis is to open one's mind and get them out of rigid left brain thinking, I never even really thought twice about the fact that I could, I didn't really think about the fact that I could get put in a cage for it for years uh, when I started using. And there were a lot of other benefits that came into my life, like my health dramatically improved. I lost a lot of weight and started kicking off lots of personal transformations. But the brainwashing is so strong that it took years of that uh, healing process, not even knowing what I was healing from before I started. Honestly, I mean, I was aware of a lot of conspiracy, but making friends with you, Nathan, you turned me on to lots of information where, yeah, I already knew a lot of this stuff and I was just ignoring it. I think that's the root problem is that as a society and a culture, we're all just ignoring that sort of low level discomfort with the bullshit that uh, that you were describing. That's just kind of always it present. Nathan, for me to really feel like it was legitimized, just seeing someone else, you know, who's thought a lot about it. Well, for me. I started to realize in grad school that the economy was set up as a rigged system to keep people working indefinitely and to, and to harvest their energy through, through this money, which is based entirely on violence at the root of it, with police enforcing uh, evictions and enforcing corporate will and corp enforcing laws that corporations are making. That's all keeping you in the matrix if, if you uh, haven't figured out a way out of it. I started to realize that in grad school, and I've started to actually talk to people about it in a group that I was in called Socrates Cafe, where we met and we voted on one question. And I actually got that question voted for for one night. Is the econ economy being used to enslave the masses? And the, these were older people mainly, but they were very ignorant 
I would say, and very uneducated about the about the facts regarding just the Federal Reserve System and the central banking system that exists in every country. Well, and the fact that older generations are basically fed a constant uh, supply of CNN or Fox News. I mean, people that are going to fast food establishments, for example, I haven't stepped foot in one of those for a long time. But one thing I remember is there's always like CNN or Fox News on the TV. You go to your dentist. That's the case. You go to any restaurant. One of the things like small things that can really help you actually start deprogramming yourself is to just stop going to restaurants unless they're like local establishments that are not, you know, even some of those are going to have like a sports bar vibe with all kinds of things on TV. But at the very least, if you go support a local establishment, it's some the money that you're spending is going into your community. I think that's one of the like, we're super separated from community and we have misidentified groupthink as community. I think that's one of the root causes of, of where we're at right now. This whole festival is about building a community of people where we know the others out there who are gun owners, landowners, people who want freedom in the realest sense. That's, that's the community that you want to bring together. But like you were saying, they don't watch the news. They're not the easiest people to reach. So we have a couple good ideas regarding handing out flyers and locations that will really find that crowd in a good sense. Yeah, like we're, we're going to visit a few gun shows, for example, and just pass flyers out it and see if we can't talk to some people at the gun shows. Just I just thought of that idea last night, but we're taking it real seriously. This type of topic, when you focus on truth... It's a barbecue. It's going to be awesome. When you focus on truth, loving community, and, and freedom, y you will bring together a wide variety of eclectic people who are really ready to see change and, and are ready to participate in that change. And that's that's what we're going for. I think this is actually a topic that um, maybe I didn't expect to jump into this early because there's so many things on the table that we could talk about. It's almost impossible to, to pick just like one or a few. But gun ownership and gun rights is massively hot button issue right now and i think a lot of listeners even who might not have a lot of experience hearing people talk about things like natural law and freedom and and our actual rights you know a lot of us i i for one very guilty for many years of being in sort of like a new age bubble where i just positive thinking is all you need type of mentality uh pacifism as a mentality in regards to my gun rights, like, oh, I don't need a gun because I'm never going to need it, basically. My point being is that it's actually something worth talking about right now. Like, this isn't some, like, NRA, National Rifle Association rally that you're talking about with Freedom Fest. It's just one of the most important things to prevent our freedoms going any further into the trash can is to protect our natural right to, I guess you could say God-given. It's just granted by the fact that we're all equally value, valuable beings, so we all have an equal right to protect ourselves and what we care about. So, yeah, that's the one barricade that's strongest between total tyranny and enslavement and freedom is the fact that so many people actually still own guns. Well, yeah, that's the masculine pillar of freedom is uh, self-defense. And the feminine pillar is a non-aggression principle. And Mark Passio did a real good job breaking that down as being really emphasizing that you need both of those pillars to actually manifest freedom in society. You know, if you're just focusing on not stealing from people and not initiating an unjust violence against other people, that's only going to get you so far when we have a society like we have now where there's people on a regular basis doing their jobs order followers in uh, government and really not just government, but largely government is the biggest gang around on earth at this point. And it's one of the most entrenched religions that people believe in. I just am following sort of in Mark Passio's footsteps, and I have been ever since I tuned into him. Like I was saying, I, I found out about the Federal Reserve on my own. And I was just digging around Google a bit because I was really wanting to get to the bottom of what was going on. And on a random YouTube video, somebody like commented to check out Mark Passio's work. And so I listened to the whole the whole 
podcast, which was like 500 hours almost. Um, Chance listened to it too. I got that's one. That's how I knew me and Chance would get along is because he actually listened to the whole Mark Passio podcast. I'm sure y'all have heard heard about him on his podcast here and there, but that really got me onto the playing field as far as becoming active and using my will, which. You have your thoughts, your emotions, and your actions all have to be in alignment with a certain goal in order to manifest what you say you want on this planet, which in this case is freedom. If, you, if you're not doing anything to to move in that direction, then good luck getting there, basically. So that's... Passio actually had a Free Your Mind conference, and I went three times. He had it five times. He was kind of the mastermind of it. Uh it lasted for five years. Um, he, he was at Anarchapulco this year, which is a anarchy conference in Mexico. And, y- you know, there's not any type of freedom conference in this Midwest area that I'm aware of. I, I just saw freedomfest.com is actually a domain name for a libertarian festival that's in Las Vegas. Because before you got here, Chance, I was checking the domain name newhavenfreedomfest.com, which is going to be the domain for the website for this festival. So I bought, I went ahead and bought that domain name, and I haven't set the website up yet. But I'm basically going to do it by hand because I'm kind of trained and I need a little practice making websites. But Getting involved just requires finding what you already know how to do or exploring something you're interested in and using that as a delivery message for what it is like your perspective on the truth in the world. And that could be artists really have a huge amount of power in that respect, because once you've developed a following just through the sheer skill that you've developed over time as a career artist, uh, you can start implanting symbolism based on the, you know, the world that you want to see into your artwork and paying attention to that type of energy in your expression. And you will and invariably be planting seeds in people's right brain towards different ways of looking at the world. I think that's why someone who is very left brained even could possibly walk up on a painting and just start, you know, crying out of the the way that it moved them or something. The same can be done through like you can accomplish the same work on, on a lot of different levels, whether it's making a web- website and organizing an event or just speaking truth to power wherever you can to people that might listen. It's a difficult path to be on to actually see the corruption in the world and want to do something about it because it seems like the more force that you exhibit, and I think this is actually a a principle of natural law, but the more force that you try to put onto the universe, you will meet greater force down the line. So it's about a different type of force that you're you're using i guess it's like build it and they will come type of thing rather than uh go around recruiting if that makes sense so that's what it is and so this will be a smaller event i'm sure no not for a lack of effort for you guys to connect to the community but just this even this conversation has a small demographic of interested people and a lot of groups this is why i want to have you on here because i want to get more people interested in some of these ideas whether it's our right to own guns and that's not and that's something we should talk about more i really think because it's not granted by like some piece of paper called the constitution that you can have a gun just like it's not granted by any other person that you have the right to breathe air and walk around i think that's what we need to talk about is like how how is government slavery how is it mind control these are things that I i talk about sometimes on my show but you know, me and you haven't had a conversation about this on the show for over a year, probably. So there's probably a lot of listeners that are like, what the hell are they on about? Right. So I just want to say two things about the previous topic and kind of leading into the topic ahead. Oppressors can tyrannize only when they achieve a standing army, an enslaved press, and a disarmed populace. James Madison, founding father of the Constitution. And then people will be like, okay, so we're in a slave society. Can I, what, can I even do anything about it? And then another good one is, if you stand for nothing, people who stand for nothing, really, fall for anything. Yeah, and if you don't think you're in a slave society, let's just look at a small example. If you and I were alone on a desert island and we were collecting bananas, and there was a rule that we made that said, for every 10 bananas you collect, you have to give me five. Is that, does that make you my slave? Or do you have to be giving me all the bananas 
to be my slave. Like if you didn't agree to the rule and you're having your energy or your labor robbed, like in the form of taxation, I, I does it like at what point is it not slavery? Is it 10 percent? Is it 50 percent? Uh, and my parents pay like 60 percent of their income in taxes and they work really, really hard. And like it's very it's very crazy to watch uh, that type of a thing play out. Yeah, you got to get really down to the root causal factors of how that can manifest. And it's all in people's heads. And you have uh, social engineers, international think tanks that meet regularly. And they work together and coordinate the media in every country to program people. And the education systems are, are a big target for them. They want to program people with the same religion so that they, they use mental gymnastics and tricks to actually get you to not even understand what slavery and freedom is. It's similar to the book 1984 where they talk about war is peace and freedom is slavery. That's what they're doing to people in, in mass. It's in already done. Uh, a good example of that is if you ask anybody what the word anarchy means, they will they typically will say, well, that's chaos. And that means no government and therefore chaos and there's no rules and everyone kills each other and, and you die. And the word in Latin, all it means is no masters, no rulers, and hence no slaves. So it just means not, there, are no, there is no condition of slavery. And the... Hence, there is no government because government is a form of slavery. And in order to get people to realize that, you have to sit there and define in, in logical left brain very specific what your language and what you're referring to. So slavery is a relationship, first of all, where there is two classes of people or two types of people. And it can just be two people. It can be between two people. But... In, in a state of slavery, the master issues commands, and he expects the slave to obey commands that he issues. And if the slave disobeys the commands, then the master will violently punish the slave using immoral, unjust initiations of aggressive force. And that is the foundation of the government system. And really, if you take away that dynamic from, from any government, it stops being government. And that, that's, what, that's why you can have a one-liner, government is slavery, because if you take away the police forcing you know, use of weapons from the government, then it's not slavery. It's not government anymore. And that's, that's the – we've been conditioned into thinking that that's normal. And a big part of the solution to all kinds of problems around the world is to deprogram people from that specific religion, which is the religion of authority, which is another name, again, for a master-slave relationship where the authority tells you what to do, takes your stuff. Uh, a lot of times it gets in, into weird sexual dynamics with you know, cults and stuff, but it's the same general vibe as uh, keeping you under their thumb using bullying and using a strong arm like law enforcement, for example. So. Well, what's also very important to bear in mind with this slavery culture that we're talking about is that the master and slave dynamic is completely reciprocal. And for it to actually work and maintain itself, actually, there has to be an order of masters and slaves and slaves who are masters to something below them. And then, you know, and then those slaves are masters to something. And it's just like this hierarchy chain that has to exist. And the the truth is the power of in the master's hands is completely granted to them by the slaves. And the slaves have a psychological dependency on the authority that basically says in the, to themselves and unconsciously, if I give up my right to freedom, my right to decide for myself what's right and wrong based on my conscience, then I'm not responsible for my behavior anymore. That means I'm scot-free. Like I don't have to, just the same argument that religion gives people to work with. Like, oh, if I just trust in this particular mythology and I do these particular ritualistic things, then I can rest assured that I'm not responsible for my own behavior. There's no karmic repercussions ultimately. And that I have, you know, a place in heaven or something, and I don't have to worry about what I'm doing here because I believe the right stuff. Government is the same type of a religious structure. You're saying, oh, I don't have to worry about 
right and wrong. I just have to pay attention to what these laws say I can and can't do. And then what I can get away with in the gray areas is fine. <laughs> it's uh has nothing to do with actual, you know, the law of man has nothing to do with actual true universal morality, which is something that everybody is born recognizing uh, automatically. And then we get it conditioned out of us. Yeah. As kids, we have phases we go through of the pleasure principle phase where we're, we're no longer, or we're not able yet to delay gratification or think of others before ourselves. But you know, a lot of people never even get past that because they stay in that mode and they only behave whenever there's like a boss looking or a parent around. It's it's quite a, a state that we're in as a civilization. I mean, I'm I'm part of this too. I still have a nine to five I go to. You know, I I don't look at it as an authority. As such a bad authority system compared to some other jobs. But yeah, I think th this is something to bear in mind. We need to think about how we as people are dependent on the systems that these so-called masters have put up for us, like whether it's drinking tap water instead of going and gathering your own water like your ancestors did, or, you know, eating GMO foods or living in a city that's getting bombarded with chemtrails. All these things are things that we've, that we agree to unconsciously or consciously by not finding a way to take responsibility for what it is that we're receiving from this system back for ourselves. Yeah, it's really time for people to just make up their mind what side of truth and what side of slavery. Are you for slavery or are you against slavery? And the time is is always now to make that choice. And there are balancing forces in nature that will correct you slowly or even quickly if you ignore the warning signs. Supporting that kind of immorality on a mass scale never ends up well for any species, and it ends in extinction. And there are a lot of warning signs around the globe right now. Volcanoes going off, earthquakes. If you pay attention, like I saw a video today of was showing um, millions of fish just dying in mass. Like there was a beach in Australia that had 200 whales that were just washed up on the beach, and then they had a similar one in a in a different country with dolphins, and there was all these little rivers that were just full of dead fish and earthquakes everywhere. Uh, these are all warning signs that are telling you know the human race that it's time for them to grow up, and they can't they can't sit here and drop nuclear bombs, and and you can't let your government do that, and you can't let them steal from you, because and then knowing that they're going to have a military. And they're building a military out of your out of what they are taking from you and and not do anything about that. That's that's childish, like irresponsibility to allow that to happen and not even contribute at all to any type of resistance. So it's like this all these balancing forces are there to wake people up and, and to shake them up. And once you decide that that you are ready to do a little bit of spiritual work, both on yourself and on the you know other humans around you, that then the universe comes to your aid and things will fall into alignment over time. The further that you get down this path of forgiveness, which means stop uh, engaging in wrongdoing or you know making your mind up, it, it has to do with choosing the right thing and and coming to an understanding of right versus wrong, once you make that choice, everything gets better from there. Slowly and over time, you, you get into this upward spiral. And that's kind of how this whole event, Freedom Fest, uh, manifested was we got to, I got a chance, you know, on the on up up to the level of with the Mark Passio podcast. Uh, well, I'm way past that. I've graduated to many different philosophers now. Like I'm digging my way through German idealism currently, and <laughs> there's yeah, there's so much doing a lot of great work. Uh, it's a good. it's a team effort for sure, and that's kind of what the chance. I I remember him telling me that he was wanting to start some kind of a an event. This is going to be an annual repeating event every year. And, you know, the more events that we can have uh, in the more areas, the, the faster and the better this whole process of changing human society back into something that's actually sustainable and that's not self-destructive, the, the better that's going to go, the, the more people that get involved. And that's kind of the focus of this Freedom Fest is just love, choosing the right choices, contributing to the cause of fixing things, 
getting to the bottom of truth in people's minds. So, you know, free speech, helping each other to come to an understanding of the root causes of so many of people's problems and actually working towards an actual solutions to those problems. Like the community that that's putting that is hosting this festival, a uh, new Haven native American church. It's, it's on their land out in Ava. It's very, very beautiful area with uh, fresh, fresh water, like the best, you know, we still have good water here. Surprising, surprisingly out in the country, you can still find drinkable water and we're just kind of hosting this and we're doing all the community there is very strong. We all been kind of working towards getting away from the matrix and starting uh agorism, which means uh you just step out of the government's control. You just step you just stop stop going along with it and then we're just kind of moving um out into the the, wood, the woods kind of away from the cities and we're just rebuilding things. And we're just going to do it ourselves and the more people there the better that's going to go and at some point you you know there might be issues with like local authorities at some point but if there's thousands of people there there they won't have any problem with it they'll be like oh okay well maybe I'll just quit my job I mean obviously these people don't like me out here so <laughs> well also the more of us that are just no longer complying with things that are being forced on us by the government and the taxation system and all that that ties into it take each person that disengages from that takes power away from them because their only power is in the minds of people that's it they don't it, the government is a word them is just a them like even people who you could categorize as order followers who are behaving in what is essentially immoral behavior because of the fact that they're taking orders and instead of thinking for themselves what's right or wrong, you know, in the case that we brought up right off the bat with cannabis that, you know, it's the person who arrests someone for cannabis that is morally responsible for that act of putting someone in a cage, not the person who wrote the law or people who wrote the law so much. It's actually the people that do the act. And that's the case for everything immoral that a big gang like the government does is individuals. So reaching them on the individual level, that's going to have to happen by leading through example. And like in the example you just gave, if uh, when police officers come to festivals, for example, that are good, wholesome events and, they, you know, it's a big guy, even something like Freedom Fest, they're not going to come in like guns blazing. You know, your country officers out in Ava, they're part of the community too. They're people too. They're just mentally brainwashed ultimately i think most of them think they're doing the right thing and they think they're good people and and in a lot of instances someone who is acting in the capacity of a police officer could do something legitimately heroic or good but especially in the case of big cities police officers are more really there to respond to people who in some way cause some someone to lose money <laughs> yeah <laughs> that has money and in general uh no one one of the important things to know truth-wise about your your rights and about natural laws that nobody has the right to give up their own responsibility for their own self-defense to someone else. You yes. cannot put that on another person. So while you could have someone who acted sort of like a police officer in, in an anarchistic community and that they went around and offered to help people or watched out for trouble, it's not their ultimate responsibility in – just like it's the, not the police's responsibility to keep you safe, nor do they really actually do that. Well, that's part of the inspiration for this event is I can't we, – we can't like recruit Mark Passio down here. I mean we can try, um, but Mark Passio right now, he's in Philadelphia. Uh, he's got a lot, a lot on his plate. Well, we need to decentralize. We don't need one person to be right, the exactly. mouthpiece of truth either. So it's like I, you know, if I want freedom where I live, then I have to do something about it helping to manifest freedom in in Missouri. So it's pretty much open mic stage in all senses of the word freedom and speak your truth and play and we're gonna play music and it's gonna be we got a PA system but it's nothing super loud on the PA system. It's just gonna you know we're not going for a blast out festival. We're going for like nice ambient whatever anyone wants to listen to not going to be super loud because there is a main stage and then there's a river and it's really nice to not necessarily hear the music when you're at the river yeah so this lands really really gets you back in the groove of feeling nice and then on top of that it's going to be everywhere you look people who agree with the fact that we're in a slave system and we're going to get out 
not if we're going to get out or how or we are going to get out. Well, definitely the how is something that's going to get addressed as well. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. I mean, you guys have a range of topics that you're going to be hoping to host from free energy and uh, alternative physics models to like we t- like I touched on the intro gardening and homesteading. All of these are massively empowering things and creating, as Terrence McKenna said, don't consume culture, create culture. Well, one of the exactly. things about create, creating food is creating culture. That's something we all need to get in our heads. Like, yeah, a lot of us, like myself included and listeners are probably aspiring to be, you know, successful artists or creators in some capacity. And that's very important. And the imagination plays a big role in that. But your imagination can help you garden also. Actually, manifesting anything into your life uh, that's positive requires your imagination. So don't think you just have to try to like paint or, or draw to become more imaginative or get more in touch with your true self. Everything that is good for you that you could imagine and then start putting into practice is a form of art that you are making your life. Food is one of the most alchemical acts in the sense that if you grow it and nurture a life being through its life and then consume it knowing well what your soil content is. Yeah, and we we are going to have a lot of artists that show up and there'll probably be people making art while they're there. I'll definitely be doing that. <laughs> yeah, like I like I said, there the vending is going to be kind of first come first cur- first serve. There's like probably ten or fifteen electrical hookups and stuff. You know, mainly for vendors, I would say. But we're we're not we're kind of being real loose on organization with this. And you know, I don't want to ha- be have all the responsibility on me. I saw how that lighting of the moon festival kind of win and it stressed out a lot of the organizers to some degree and the advertising the advertising on that was done by an external company and it it attracted certain people that probably you know did a little damage while they were there but there was a lot of healing as well and we had a very strong healing community to show up for that festival and we're going to attract the same people again um but the, the key is when you when you start speaking the truth and putting energy into the right topics like morality you know conspiracy theories which is just a way of figuring out what's actually happening on right this, on on the planet you'll you'll draw people that you know are are have been waiting for something like this for a long time there's a lot of preppers out there in the hills <laughs> yeah in missouri there's especially missouri yeah there's plenty of people already like like i we only really got the ball rolling on this uh idea like a week ago and there, we've already had a lot of synchronicities of people ready to to throw in support, like we might get free bathrooms. I've just you know, been we'll, waiting for the day that you did this because, like you said, I've wanted an event like this happen in the area. Just being like, why don't they have the thing that you went to? Because he was like, "Free your mind cost me two thousand to travel to or whatever and go to." And I was like, "Why don't we just host that here?" Because the person leading the church after lighting of the moon, you know, he was kind of like, "I just want to do themed festivals," and he even said a pioneering festival. So there's going to be at some point like straight 1800s cooking off the land style festival with pioneer clothing and all that. I think it's good to move away from the just music festival vibe because like you said, that gets stressful for organizers. It attracts basically there was lots of complaints on the sound too. If you, if you're, you know, if you're promoting something as just a party, then you're going to get people who only care about partying yeah. and well, I can I can attest to the fact that going to my first music festival with the mindset that I was just there to party wound up causing me to have a type of rite of passage experience that led me to be who I am now in a massive way. That doesn't happen for everybody. Not everyone is open to that type of thing. I was open to it. That's why it happened. And so it, it could happen at a, just any regular music festival, sure. But there's a lot of those. They're becoming a dime a dozen, which is also not bad. It's good that there's more artistic opportunities for local people to perform and and show off their stuff but it is good to be doing something different and i i really think like i'm i'm interested to see how it's going to work out the first come first serve scenario i think we're going to see people instead of like fighting over position they're going to be like oh how can we just kind of merge and work together here you know it's going to be cool to see i and i I really expect that and the people who are already in this community will will be showing up and it's real loose with us, so, you know, we can show up two days ahead of time. We could camp out the whole week 
people that are kind of community members and stuff and to prepare for things and um we'll have many helping hands you know i'm not i'm not really running the festival i'm just putting a, a whole lot of energy in right now and the funny thing about this festival is that it just with the topic alone um has really inspired me to get back into my creative flow in a few ways with uh with art specifically and even with web design i had kind of stagnated you know after i got done with grad school with uh, the computer programming and coding because I, I I had picked up the basics of this new technolo technology stack for making websites. It's called the Mean Stack. It was real real fancy uh, coded in JavaScript, and I, I picked it up for a few months. I was kind of enjoying it, but I just wasn't really inspired to continue. You know, I was trying to make an online shop for myself to sell Organite, right? But as soon as... I really got behind and started with this event. Like I've been making flyers and I'm just hand drawing all the flyers with markers and a, I've already got a bunch of ideas for flyers, like a UFO on one. I had a, a great idea for a flyer. Have like kind of like a military style pinup doll girl, right? Pinup girl, right? With like a, holding a big rifle and then, and then maybe an upside down American flag or an anarchy flag, or don't tread on me flag, or something like that. And then it has just Freedom Freedom Fest made. And so there'll be all kinds of different art behind it. But the the thing is, once you get on the, on the path of truth and responsibility, all that art goes with it, and you just get better and better as an artist. Well, you find that things that you were previously interested in that seem disconnected all of a sudden start converging. And like in the case of you having an interest in web design, well, now that's going to serve you for this Freedom Fest website. And... The fact that you like to draw, that's going to help you make some cool posters for this event. And we really are in the age of one person can actually successfully do the jack of all trades thing because tools are making it easier to to do a lot of a lot of what used to be very specialized tasks like creating a website for yourself. And speaking of trade, I'm an electrician by trade, so I see all of this disharmony and i think what's you know what's my role and for me that's the energy crisis right and so we're going to be talking about all sorts of different things i'm just going to be walking around talking about this stuff basically i think all the problems lead back to the petroleum empire yeah the petroleum empire has even gone so far as to erase our actual history in my opinion, and rewrite it with bloody wars and a thousand years of darkness or whatever after the fall of Rome happened, whenever they genocided every single indigenous population on this planet. And there's lots of hard evidence that there was higher technology back then, doing with illuminated lanterns and electricity. And piezoelectricity. And, and so to me, my perspective is on the, on the front of the Invention Secrecy Act. And that's this 1951, February 1st, codified 35 U.S.C. Chapter 17. It's a body of U.S. federal law designed to prevent disclosure of new inventions and technologies that, in the opinion of selected federal agencies, present a possible threat to the national security of the United States. So the national security is this illusion that we are still in the oil age. Well, it's, it's also a corp illusion. It's a corporation, right? In the United States. Well, yeah. So if they lose profits, then the security is lost. <laughs> right. So the United States being a corporatocracy, its national security is equivalent to it selling gasoline and petroleum and using wired technology and all of that sort of stuff that was invented past and beyond in the 1900s moving forward and even and the latest and greatest years ahead of our technology now is essentially what it's at now and the latest and greatest product in the american corporatocracy empire is actually you the consumer and the fact that the majority of people are so well trained to respond to advertisements and trends and that these delivery pipes have been redeveloped and masked as things like social media 
to the point where they can flip a switch and sell 10 trillion pieces of shit if they wanted to. <laughs> like, like uh, they've got they've got everyone's number literally. It's you're holding their mind control device in your hand possibly right now just to listen to this show. And it, so what is important is to find innovative technological solutions to these these dependencies we have, but more importantly to change the way that we are doing currency and commerce because it's basically a war on the people and then the people themselves are divide you know classic divide and conquer commerce causes people to be at war with one another as well and yeah this uh, suppression of in, of new inventions is a big a big part of that and it's something that people have been fucking murdered for just <laughs> let alone like it's so here's catch the back is, now though trick here is do not file patent legislation do not go to the patent office do not tell the government exactly what your plans are to build right that's the mistake that every other person has made (laughs) it's crazy i mean we could be doing so many different things than oil that's for sure and not only do they rewrite our history they rewrote our medical practices too what you find in allopathic medicine which is the style that is practiced in the west is a bunch of petroleum derivative medicines that are more chemically harmful in their side effects than their supposed in, intended effects but you know, this goes for the vaccine epidemic as well side effects aren't side effects people they're just fucking effects man like that's what it does now we got to take this more seriously what we're putting into our own bodies because it is a war it's a war on us that's being fought not like that's the eternal state of war that the the empire is in is against its own people and mm-hmm. It's not about picking up rifles and going and fighting them, but it is about making sure we've got one, uh, each got our own, because otherwise, what is to stop them from just taking us out? And that, yeah, gun gun laws are not going to save you from criminals and thugs, people. And so well, let's not make it so that it's impossible for us to actually own our own firearms, because we can trust ourselves to be responsible with them. We can't, the people we can't trust are our brainwashed thugs right right yeah they're actually the most irresponsible group of gun owners in the country is the police (laughs) statistically they point point them at people all the time who aren't who are minding their own business they use guns to pull people over for speeding when when in order to do that you have to drive the same speed as the person that you're pulling over so like under natural law that's an example of hypocrisy and on one level, but but really, it's just not a right to do. And again, with the order following and and well, on speeding, real quick, that's actually something that's been around forever. Back in the day, you used to have what were called highwaymen or bandits, and you would go from one town to the next, and these dudes would jump out and they'd say, "Give me some money, or I'm going to beat the shit out of you or kill you." And you do, and you go, "Man, I wish the king would send some soldiers to take out these highway highwaymen." But actually, they were given a cut to the king the whole time. And now instead of highwaymen, they're called highway patrolmen. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's a different organization than the police, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a revenue collection system for the king, just like it always has been. It's so funny. Yeah, and uh, so in order to, to overcome this, you have to, A, step outside of it and re- rebuild things from the ground up. And then, B, you have to have the means – and to defend yourself using a well the con- the founders of the uh, country they called it a well regulated militia which didn't refer to government regulation it was, it, it was more in the sense of like a well regulated clock meaning meaning it's Highest in technology in, in working in working a lot. order you know just in case somebody has an aggress uh, makes an aggressive act against innocent people there will be a response and mark mark passio puts a very big emphasis on kind of the rise of the actual militia which is just um individuals who have equal rights there's no chain of obedience in a militia there's no compartmentalization of knowledge there's no uh authority there's no ranks no chain of command no chain of command um it's just it's just people like practically defending themselves against anybody and everybody. And that includes on some level, once you get the numbers and I kind of estimated the other day that about 5,000 real strong kind of dedicated people who dedicated to truth in the Ozark area, if they got all got on the same page, we could just totally disobey every authority 
and defend ourselves whenever they're, you know, pulling us over or whatever it is. And the federal government would not be able to do anything about it. Yeah, but I think this isn't to say that we shouldn't reject. Uh, you know, I think that there's a consciousness component that needs to be really considered here. So I want to like go start reiterating that. And like, there's no reason why you should even ever get pulled over, regardless of the fact that uh, people are out there waiting on the road to pull you over. And if you, it's not about like, it's not about like bowing to the authority either, but there's a certain tact that can be had with people that are in these sort of power positions where you don't have to get into the conflict with them. And in fact, in like, avoid conflict you know, at all costs, really. Ex- yeah. Well, exactly. It's only at the point of if they're taking your property or trying to harm you that you need exactly. to like, then stuff shit can get real. But j- just with like any other person, if you try to tell someone how wrong they are, they're going to like totally lock up and lose. They're going to just go into defense mode and they're not going to even listen to what you're saying. So, what well, like while it's true that there's probably a core of of solid uh, responsible gun owners like in any given area that could band together and form a legitimate physical resistance. I think like to, to go back to what you were saying about having to rebuild from the ground up everything that is true that we need to do that. But I think we got to make sure that we don't burn it down and have nothing to build with. Oh yeah. yeah. And so like a lot of people are not ready just like in the matrix to get the red pill yet. And they'll fight to stop themselves from being woken up. Well, and so that is like that is a fact that's like a reality and so there is some there is some transitional governance that needs to uh, continue occurring like even within the corrupt system that we've got acting on a local level and interacting with people who have actual power in your local area and influencing them there's wisdom in that you know like trying to go to the federal government and lobby for this or protest that that's all a joke of course you shouldn't even talk to them they shouldn't exist, giving them no mind. But local people in your real area, whether it's a council, city council or whatever, that is that is real. That's a real, like, yeah. that's sort of like, look at it like your parents have a real form of authority over you as a child. And in a similar way, people that have acquired a lot of resources in your area kind of have a legitimate level of authority in that they can make some shit happen. But it's not like they have the right rights over you. It's just that they've got their shit together to an extent. So like these are pe- – there are people that could be valuable allies that are in these corridors of power in our local areas as opposed to fighting them. Authority though, right? It's more like resource power. Yeah, that's that's true. But, you know, it's kind of like – it's kind of like with with parents to children. I'm not saying right. that like yeah, your city councilman is your parent, like but – Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm just trying to extrapolate on the fact that like we got to do this – Together in consciousness, not in a conflictive, divisive way. Like we got to retain our individuality against the collective, of course, but we also still need legitimate community and f- fusion of perspectives. And I, th- I think governance as a concept will remain as a part of like the human experience if, if we don't completely self-destruct. It's just going to morph. Yeah, it's an evolution, not a revolution. <clears throat> for you know, we mm-hmm. any destructive pendulum is what I the. I'm reading a book, it's called Reality Transurfing, and it talks about pendulums being these energy things that can just be ideas or they can be actual people. But any destructive pendulum, it actually benefits if you directly fight against it. That's what it wants you to do because it's pushing it's pushing the, the pendulum back in the other direction. And you see this a lot, or here and there you'll see it with government specifically. People people just freaking out and they're and they're like, well, uh, government sucks. I'm just gonna go and and try to take over like this Bundy Bundy Ranch. Maybe not. The, there was another one in Oregon. Those Oregon Oregon ranchers that went and tried to take over that government building, and then they all just got totally screwed over big time. One of the one of the people died from like a, a SWAT team. You know, you, that's what that's what government kind of wants. Don't fight them with yeah. the weapons they're handing you. Yeah, don't fight. Don't fight they them if you it. don't yeah. have to. Because they 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 thrive on that, and they thrive on videotaping them doing injustice and and laughing about it. And so we just you know you just there's some of these order followers are they they are kind of like good old boys, and they just they want to ha- help the hand. And they the the way that they get the public is they 
they mix in actual good responsibilities into their jobs. And that gives the illusion that that also they can be enforcing bad laws. And somehow that's okay. Somehow that balances out. If you, well, we've got them directing traffic and that's good. And we got them responding to emergencies and that's good. So, so we'll give them a break, you know, whenever they're giving, you know, kicking someone else out of their house because Chase Bank demanded that you kick them out of the house kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's really protecting society when there's, as there's more empty homes than homeless people. We're definitely doing it right with the whole society protection thing. Yeah, and so the whole <laughs> the whole concept of fighting authority it does, I think, require like I keep harping on a change in consciousness, a, a different way of seeing, and a different way of coming together. But importantly, not fighting against the power pyramid and getting yourself killed in the process, and also not being afraid that there's nothing you can do. The other thing that this entire system thrives on is your fear. And it's something I like to repeat. All fear is, is the perception that you have a loss or a lack of personal power. And as it turns out, you actually have infinite power. You are infinite consciousness. Just because you're only conscious of a small segment of the totality at a given time, the consciousness that you are does continue on infinitely and indefinitely. And Energy and consciousness are one and the same. Therefore, you have infinite power. It's just a matter of the way that you organize your consciousness on the timeline and the, your thought, and you unify your thoughts, behaviors, and actions in such a way that allows you to transmute your reality situation. So, the the fear that we can't fight the this system, the fear that we need it to survive, all of these things are rooted in belief that we couldn't make it on our own, but we have all the historical evidence that we need, which, by the way, history is truth. Oh, a lot the, whoa, big surprise there. There is such a thing as truth. That history is that. Whether or not we have the right you know, story of history is one thing, but we're sure that there have been people, our ancestors, that lived off of the land, lived in some form of balance or harmony with nature that was greater than what we've got. And in particular, even in so-called civilizations, most people up until the modern age grew their own fucking gardens. Like you, that's why, you know, you would throw tomatoes at the bad guy on stage because you had plenty of rotten tomatoes because you had a tomato plant. Like everybody grows their own food in the past. So that's, uh, I, I'm going to repeat this till the end of time on this show probably, but if everybody quit their jobs and just started growing food, this entire system would, would transform into something different it, over a matter of weeks, I think. Yeah, it's it's great that, you know, Chance is on the same page with us uh, on this. You know, the more, the better, really. And that's really the whole purpose of this conference is to just figure out who in Missouri that's around, um, who's ready and to get, get strength behind the ideas, the philosophy, the, uh, you know, just get... When you put energy into the right things like truth, love, and freedom, that's what you're 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 going to get a better better result in life every time if you make the right choices and give your energy to the right type of type of uh, I in other energy or ideologies. It's you know it's it's about choice and we're we're making the choice real simple. It's kind of a no brainer here. It's just like you show up and you you hang out. You don't you don't even have to pay if you don't want to. I mean, we we would love den donations of all of all types, even monetarily. I think we we were kind of having a recommended five dollar donation to cover like the septic tank because you have to pay five hundred dollars at the end of it. Well, I'm gonna see if maybe some local artists would be interested in throwing in some kind of like raffle re items, like people who might be planning to come and oh, vend. That's a great idea. And we could do a, a raffle or a few raffles for the festival yeah, as really just cool. a way to they make did that at for your mind conference. Make back a little bit of the uh, the expenses because I'm sure that there will be expenses incurred to some extent. Yeah, there's there's always hidden. Everyone hidden loves expenses. a raffle too. But also I wanted to point out that like this whole no schedule f free from agendas type of way of non-organization, it's like the Wu way. It's like the, <laughs> the, right? It's like the path. It is. It is totally. It's like the uh, the path of balance. non 
uh, non non-interference. non-interference, non-active acting, right? Mm-hmm. And at music festivals, one of the things I like about it is not running from stage to stage trying to get to a certain place at a certain time or to make a workshop. I actually miss most workshops that I look at and say, that sounds cool. What I like is just synchronistically floating around and running into the right people at the right time and seeing what happens. That's what this whole festival is about, man. Yeah. That's exactly what it's about. It's stressful to think, I got to get here by three. It's awesome to just chill and meet who you meet. And that's, yeah. I like that. I, I mean, like as if lot. everybody who goes to festivals is wearing a watch, you know, or has their phone with them. Well, they do. Them. They carry their phones. Um, I mean, that's how you keep the time. You contact yeah. people. Uh, it's crazy. Well, we don't really have that good of cell signal over there. I I think Verizon Carrier has signal um, on the actual property. Like but half a bar, dude. I have Verizon. No. No phones allowed. Just tell it. Just no cell phones in the vicinity. No, no, the <laughs> only just rules in place are, are natural law, uh, as far as I'm concerned. There's no stealing. You know, don't, don't violently initiate aggressive force against other people. Don't steal, and then you you won't have any problems, you know, at this festival. Other than that, well, defraud or deceive is every also bean has don't do free that. will and no harmful intent or actual action yeah, towards any other. Much we, we'll be allowed because everyone there is going to understand. That. I mean, we have a really nice creek that goes right in the back of the property, and there's there's a little <laughs> bit of hiking you could do. It's just going to be real real nice. So we are infinitely powerful as beings and it's only our belief that we're not that lets other people have power over us so if you stay in, grounded in the, the ultimate truth the capital t truth that you are an infinite being with all the power over your reality situation that is available then there's no reason why you're not completely safe or completely capable of transmuting anything dark into something light or bringing order to the chaos in a in a real way not a <laughs> like new world order way yep. yeah uh direct any questions about the conference to me or chance my email is nathaniel mark crabtree at gmail.com N-A-T-H-A-N-I-E-L-M-A-R-K-C-R-A-B-T-R-E-E at gmail.com. Yeah, thanks for coming on, guys. I guess we'll uh, wrap this up. Like I said, it went really well. We even... I didn't even really have to direct anything to go to where I wanted it time-wise. It just sort of like all flowed perfectly with no schedule. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> just, me. just like the no. festival. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. Well, all right. I guess we'll, <laughs> we'll sign off. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. So we eat Spectre of Socrates. We did it, guys. Thanks for checking out the entire show. Even if you don't necessarily agree with some of the things that we spoke about, I think anyone who's paying attention can tell that there's clearly something out of whack with modern life. And that's a thread worth pulling on. I hope you forgive me for some of the sound quality issues with this interview, too, and for there being another two-week gap between episodes. I was outside of the comfort zone of my studio for this recording, and although I'm sure I made rookie mistakes with the recording itself, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get more perfect-sounding interviews in the field once I get some better equipment. And as for the gap in episodes during August, that would be the result of poor scheduling on my part combined with spending over a week out of town on a visit to Idaho to do more filming on the documentary project I told you about last summer. I've been keeping pretty quiet about that until recently, but the project is still very much alive. For those of you who don't remember hearing me talk about this, I'll give you a few details. Last year, my main partner in crime, Haley, was hired to make a movie about our friends Colin and Finn who live on the West Coast, and I'm helping her do the filming and some editing too. Finn had suffered an extremely traumatic brain injury three years back and was trying to get on his feet, literally, with a lot of help from Colin. We've witnessed this hardworking duo transform Finn from fully unable to walk to riding mountain bikes down ski slope hills, so getting out into nature and taking things step by step was definitely the key. Colin helped Finn totally surpass the prognoses of medical professionals who thought he'd never be able to do anything physically difficult again. There's really a lot more to that story. I can't wait to have a movie to show about it, but that's still a ways off yet. So I spent a good chunk of the month chasing those two around with the camera and not making podcasts, and I humbly request your forgiveness. As we turn the corner from August to September, I can already feel a shift in my energy for the stronger. 
and that Mercury retrograde finally led up to, I hear, so I expect to keep the episodes popping out a lot more steadily for the rest of the year. I've got a few upcoming guests that I'm really excited about, and I'm working on a little more consistency with my scheduling efforts, so the future looks bright. One thing that would really help fuel my fire for podcasting would be if you signed up for Interverse Plus, because I don't really like the fact that you don't get to hear the second half of these conversations. I'd like to do the whole thing for free, but I gotta respect myself and draw a line somewhere with this work because as an artist, not not valuing what you do properly can cause imbalance between your energy output and input, leaving you more prone to burnout sooner. Think of it like if you had a band and they put out $5 of music per month and you wanted to buy that to get access to it. Except in the case of podcasting, it's actually a lot more content than that would amount to musically. For subscribing to Plus, you'll get the hour-long extensions at the end of episodes, early access to shows, and the growing archives of extended episodes from this year. And as we go forward, that will just keep getting bigger and bigger. On top of that, there are a few more perks to explore over at Patreon, and you can find a link to subscribe on interversepodcast.com or the notes for this episode, or just search for patreon.com slash interverse to find your options for supporting your favorite show. Some of the topics we dove deeper into with during this plus extension with Nathan and Aubrey were how our commerce system steals our energy and pits us against each other, the potentials and flaws of cryptocurrency, community skill sharing to establish individuals with practical sustainability and survival skills, organic foods and the danger of letting corporate distributors tell you what's safe to eat, killing spiders and how irrational fears of natural life slow us down, fundamental pillars of living mentally anyway, and uh, fundamental mental pillars of living and freedom fest, getting requests for help from giant green nature gods while on DMT, yeah, (laughs) a call to artists to create posters or promo art for the event and to come out and share performance gifts. Demystifying the nature of shadow work as it pertains to healing the body. And of course, we spoke about so much more than that, but I can't give it all away in the outro. Part of me sort of expects to have ruffled a few feathers with these topics because there are so few people who actually look at government through the lens of philosophy and realize that it's a form of slavery. Most Westerners are still very attached to the idea of authority, either supporting it consciously or unconsciously. And especially around certain issues like cannabis, people are very conditioned to think we need the government to step in and fix things. But the fact that nobody would have ever been put in a cage for it without a government to decide that is lost on us. And now many people think the only way to bring that particular medicine back is in the form of prescriptions or the somewhat better recreational setup that other states have, which is taxed outrageously. The reason democracy doesn't really work out in the end is because it's a coercive system. None of us signed this a social contract saying we agreed to it. Just like most people never agreed that cannabis should have been made illegal up to the point where, up until the point where a false propaganda campaign was unleashed through the corrupt mainstream media back in the day. Yet we are bound to these decisions against our will. If something isn't morally right for one person, you can't make it a right just because the majority believes you can. You can always take any question of cultural morality back to the perspective of there just being a few of us on a desert island. If three of you voted that I wasn't allowed to eat mangoes anymore and you told me I would be put in a cage for violating this democratically established law, would it be right? No, of course not. As long as I wasn't harming anybody else or stealing those mangoes, there could be a million other people on the island who vote that mangoes are illegal and it would still be immoral and coercion to stop me from having them. Anyway, I'm sure we've given you enough of an ear beating about freedom, but hopefully this was a little better than your typical rah-rah 4th of July version of so-called freedom. I hope to see a lot of you out at the upcoming Magic Festival this month on the 14th through the 16th at the farm near Eureka Springs in Arkansas. This event, the Gathering Mountain Festival of Magic and Lore, will be a huge convergence of a variety of magical modalities from fictional universe fandom like Harry Potter and Quidditch matches to some bigger names in the occult and magical communities with tons of fellow seekers to meet and greet throughout the weekend. I'll be doing a live podcast on Saturday night, so come out just to see that if you live near the area. It'll be my first live podcast, not a live broadcast online, but recorded in front of a live audience, and you'll have the chance to participate and ask questions if you're there. So I hope to see a lot of you that night and throughout the weekend. 
That's coming right up too. I'm not nearly as prepared as I need to be, but that's another story. Again, check the show notes for links to Plus, Freedom Fest, The Gathering Mountain Festival of Magic and Lore, and the music I selected for this episode by Griff. You should check out his new release, Future One. Really funky music with no generic limitations at all. A beautiful work of art, for sure. As for Freedom Fest, if there's any artists out there who might want to help develop some promo material, posters, digital flyers, or just share it on your pages, we'd really love to see you out at that event, and we'd appreciate the help spreading the word. Very big thanks to Nathan and Aubrey for the work they'll be doing to organize this in its own special, non-conformist way. I'm sure we'll speak with them again before the event to see what's been cooked up. So definitely let one of us know if you want to get involved. And remember, totally free to come out and vend. There's not going to... It's a free... It's Freedom Fest. Everything about it's free. So hopefully that'll attract some people. And that's it for me. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. I'll have a new episode for you soon. Remember the wise words of Buddha. There are only two mistakes one can make on the path to truth. Not starting and not going all the way. All right. Thanks for listening. Love you guys. And bye-bye.